Yeah. Well, when you get the court in the morning, okay. Because here's the, here's the other official statement you gave your question. Yeah. That's everything. Everything I've ever done. Yeah, I got a copy of my eight-page statement that I gave him. I'm going to have left. I'm going to send it on the court. Yeah. I've never seen 
the charts that cross the Ukraine that's behind you know the manufacturing lab and how it's May it please the court, um, I make the majority of this because there's a good deal we can get through. Is, is, is that acceptable? Sure, that's fine. Your Honor, um, we have filed um, numerous motions and, and um, demands for speedy trial, etc. in this hearing, as well as an omnibus discovery motion, all at the preliminary hearing. Um, regretfully, this case has moved very slowly. Um, it's moved slowly somewhat because um, the state, in an abundance of care, requested um, two separate psychological reviews to be done. The second was done um, two months or a month and a half ago, for which both psychologicals um, were consistent in that this defendant has the requisite uh, capacity to stand trial and understand the, um, the wrongfulness of, of the criminal act he's alleged to have uh, committed. And he's also um, able to assist in his defense, etc. Um, so what we're hoping to do now is move to the business of getting this resolved. Um, to that end, we um, bring to the court's attention the demand for speedy trial that was filed in May of 2012 and request um, uh, the court's guidance as to whether or not it's properly lodged in the uh, case file. We're having a little bit of difficulty with things, and I'm, I have time to stamp that haven't quite made it to the case file. We're hoping to, to get some of those evidentiary issues and motions done. I'm certain that it has been because I've seen it. It's not uh, in the file that I have because I have a file folder and I don't have the original file. But I'm almost positive that uh, it is in the file. And uh, would you take a few minutes uh, if you would? No, Your Honor. Absolutely not. I, I went ahead and, in an abundance of caution, refiled everything today except for a motion to dismiss on grounds of untimely delay. Somehow I didn't leave my car with that one. Um, but it will be filed today by noon. We filed a motion for grounds for unreasonable delay based on the fact that we requested a speedy trial over a year ago. Um, my recommendation, Your Honor, because I understand that the state wasn't um, didn't receive the notice that, that um, we'd uh, put in the circuit court's box for things to go to the circuit to go to the prosecutor's office, is that we proffer all of the evidentiary issues and, and bring these motions today and then afford the state an opportunity to respond to the deem it necessary on the record. Uh, that will at least allow um, the defendant the opportunity to have these issues put on the record. I'll do the formalized ones really quickly and then he just would like to address the court briefly as to things that um, he has seen and why he believes a dismissal would be would be um, the right thing to happen.
first motion with respect to some indispensable evidence that we brought to the state's attention over the years as a motion for independent inspection. Apparently there was a dash cam that was in the vehicle when Mr. Collins was arrested and conversations had between himself and a trooper Eifert, which are exculpatory and absolutely going to be integral in his defending this action. So we would request that the court compel the prosecutor's office to it. I know they don't have it now. We've reviewed some of their files. But compel the law enforcement officers to obtain the dash cam video to trooper Eifert for the day of the arrest. That would be the first thing that is going to assist our defense. Let's kind of talk about that a little bit. I dealt with dash cam video cameras when I was in the Fourth Circuit and it's very
the major charge to try that again. Okay. And I'll inform the court if we run into any additional difficulties. Okay. Um, Your Honor, we brought to the state's attention um, that we received copies in discovery of some text messages in a, in a related case. And what we're discovering is it's a truncated list of text messages. We've tried to go through the subpoena to obtain more complete records to the phone um, But frankly, I would like for the court to, um, to ask the state to, instead of getting a very limited sample of, of text messages in, in a matter that relates to Ron Collins, to extend the net to everything they have. Um, we believe they pull the block of things that are most inculpatory of hearing and omitted a lot of um, text messages the other way. And Mr. Lance is familiar with the, uh, with the uh, text messages I'm speaking of. We've talked about um, checking on that and, and uh, another video and, and again, a related case. But um, Mr. my client feels that with respect to a lot of the, the evidence in these two companion cases that he feels as if it's intentional that, that some of these evidence um, evidence items that have been turned over in discovery have been purposely truncated. Uh, so we would ask the, the formally for the state to re-review its, its records with respect to text messages already turned over in discovery and supplement that if uh, as soon as possible so that we're able to get our hands around that in a better fashion. Um, Your Honor, I wanted to confirm that, um, and please don't look in the file and take time for it, but does the court recall seeing an omnibus discovery motion already yeah, in this I'm matter? Yeah, in the file. Okay. We previously filed the motion for transcripts, the omnibus discovery, and the, and the uh, speedy trial demand. We just weren't sure that the court, um, okay. And lastly, Your Honor, I'm withdrawing our motion for the competence review hearing as based on the two psychological reports. Mr. Collins is ready and able to stand trial with a clean bill of health, so to speak. So should the court have uh, reviewed a withdrawal of our motion for competency review, it, we would just ask that it be disregarded at this time. Okay. I, I see an this discovery motion that is in the file. Your Honor, in, in closing of my more formal life, uh, Mr. Collins has asked to address to the court um, specifically why he believes, and again, uh, we understand that they will be afforded an opportunity to respond, but he's asked if he could address on his own behalf, as he can articulate better than anyone, why he feels as if the, um, the collaboration of, of well, powers in, in, in these cases has led to his due process rights being increased. He's asked the court process for him to brief his case to the court as to these issues. Um, to begin with, uh, there is a matter of a second search warrant that was filed October 26, uh, 2011. I didn't find this out until the preliminary hearing. Um, more importantly, uh, my computers were seized February 25, 2011 under a supposed terrorism search warrant. I wrote a statement to the forensics lab March 10th of 2011. Uh, telling them to look on my Blackberry that there was a recorded argument between me and my uncle Thomas Keller. Uh, I believe um, Mr. Lamb was the uh, prosecutor for the state in 2009 when my uncle lost custody of his uh, children due to a uh, sex abuse case uh, for the Honorable Robert Burnside. The, uh, the, that statement, uh, and in fact it was Trooper Eifert's testimony at the preliminary hearing, that he was contacted by the uh, forensics lab October 25, 2011, and that he had told him to stop investigating so that he could look for an Android phone because I had mistakenly called my BlackBerry an Android. I commonly used Android format, and the BlackBerry was free for switching to Verizon to avoid Ashley Redden, whose mother had a phone through Sprint, and my previous phone was through Sprint. 
um, that the oh, okay. I'm just okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, when I had filed that about approximately a year later, uh, sometime in April uh, of 2012. Uh, I began trying to find out why I wasn't charged with a crime. It had been over a year since my computer was taken. Uh, there is a recording, I believe, uh, Your Honor, that when Mingo Winters removed himself uh, as my attorney uh, in the uh, Ashley Redden case, uh, we had a uh, hearing before you in the matter of removing him. He had asked for uh, restitution from the court for the things I had said about him on the Internet. and. Uh, I had given the court certain uh, pieces of evidence that Mingo Winters was unaware that I had. Among them uh, was a recording of myself and Lieutenant Deeds when I had also given him a copy of that statement in the forensics lab. Uh, more importantly, uh, the, um, the, the statements and the information I gave. Uh, April 13th of 2012, I contacted Captain White, head of professional standards for the state police. Uh, because I had been threatened by Lieutenant Deeds uh, in a roundabout manner that they had found child pornography on my computers. I, I had known about that. I had admitted to that in the uh, March 10th statement. I actually have a copy of that if you would like to see it, Your Honor. Um, the, uh, the issue was that the argument between myself and my uncle uh, involved him threatening to bring charges on me for terrorism. I read books dealing with martial arts and for survival training and I've actually written books dealing with counterterrorism. Uh, I have level one counterterrorism training through the U.S. Army. Uh, honorable discharge in 2005 as an active, uh, as an infantry soldier, and uh, later on entered uh, as an MP with the 304th MPs out of Bluefield, West Virginia. Um, during, I have several books uh, on my computer, uh, uh, one of which uh, is actually at the Al-Qaeda uh, terrorist training manual. I had actually quoted from it in a uh, book I have published, and the quote I quoted from it was very articulate and very methodical, which is the point I wanted to make, that terrorists aren't crazy loonies that we all seem to be told they are by the media, that they are actually very intelligent, very methodical, and therefore have a process of acting that would allow a person, even a civilian, to be able to understand that process, to see the uh, warning signs before they become a danger to them to avoid the threat. Uh, I'd also been working on a book called Street Soldier, where I compared the indoctrination of various gangs uh, and the evolution of prison-based martial arts uh, into the um, psychological uh, manipulation and uh, conditioning used by various terrorist networks. So my uncle had claimed to uh, report me for terrorism, and during that same argument, I told him that I would report him for uh, downloading child pornography onto my computer. During the situation that it occurred, I had caught him downloading it, and when I asked him about it, he said it was to uh, plan it on his ex-wife, who made his son lie on him. Uh, and there were some issues with my uncle bragging about certain officers uh, who were his friends that were supposedly going to cover for him and everything else that were caught on that recording. Now, it seems to me that with that being mentioned and that being on the recording, that that would be something very pertinent for the state police or the courts to look into. Um, magically enough, uh, when I did file that uh, complaint or that call to uh, Captain White of Professional Standards, the very next day, April 14th, was when the warrant for child pornography came through. I turned myself in April uh, 19th, 2012. It's been over a year, three terms of the grand jury, and as I understand it, uh, I, the, the code itself escapes me at the moment, but I do believe there is a court case with the Supreme Court of West Virginia that says, uh, Kirby versus Nolan, which says that uh, the, uh, it was in the litigator's mind that one should not be on, uh, held under indictment for more than three terms of the grand jury, if not in jail. If in jail, then two terms of the grand jury. Uh, it's been over three terms of the grand jury. I waived the indictment to go ahead and get this over with because of the evidence and the pertinency of the evidence. None of this has been brought up. We haven't seen the second search warrant, and I was actually uh, told at some point that the issue was that the search warrant was filed in Kanawha County. Now, 
Your Honor. Um, with all due respect, as the Chief Judge of Raleigh County, it is certainly within your power, and I would be so bold as to ask uh, the court that you would uh, fax a request from uh, or to the clerk's office in Kanawha County to get a copy of the second search warrant because the issue is whether or not the evidence has been removed from the forensic lab. The recording with Lieutenant D has him asking about my BlackBerry password. Um, the transcript from the preliminary hearing for the child porn case, Trooper Ethers said that he, uh, there was problems accessing the BlackBerry. The fact of the matter is BlackBerries are extremely easy to access even without the password. That was one of the issues with uh, the, oh, President Obama having a BlackBerry. Um, and that was one of the main concerns for national security. There's been multiple uh, experts that have made comments concerning that we're dealing with uh, President Obama. So in that respect, I um, very bluntly would say that I would be calling the trooper a liar because it is uh, a very public understanding that blackberries are very easy to access, which comes into the issue of the second search warrant of why things were removed and why I was never charged with a crime uh, when the evidence was supposedly found October 26th of 2011, but I was never charged with a crime until April 14th, 2012, after I threatened to go to the superintendent and the governor on Captain White and Lieutenant D's poor sister, not Randy, but Lieutenant D's and these other officers who seem to be fabricating evidence. Um, in the issue with the uh, text messages alone, there's a reference to me and Ashley speaking on New Year's, but text messages don't begin until April 26th. So if we had contact when we were talking on New Year's, why start on April 26th? Uh, and, and yourself, the local prosecutor has a recording of a actual May who was a go-between for uh, me and Ashley Redneck. We had a falling out um, because of the issue on New Year's that she was coming to me and talking to me and then trying to send these things back and forth. Uh, the fact there's um, an issue that actually made was actually a go-between from being actually read and uh, actually they're interrelated. Uh, quite simply, Your Honor, um, at the original uh, delinquency charge, when it was appealed, uh, and bear in mind, uh, the original charge stems from October of 2005. Uh, we went to court for the matter in 2008 uh, after various motions and other charges were brought forth. Uh, there was an allegation of uh, alcohol and some unknown pill, allegedly a date rape drug. Uh, there was no physical evidence presented. During the appeal, Ashley Redden stated, uh, in fact, before Judge Hutchison, that she was uh, made to believe that I was going to rape her by her mother, Trooper Duckworth, and the prosecutor. Uh, as it turns out, Trooper Duckworth is a close personal friend of both the Reddens and the Kirks. Um, he actually attends the same church as the uh, Kirks. His partner, Trooper Williams, is also a, rel a blood relative of the Reddens, who also happens to be Trooper Duckworth's brother in law. It's kind of a <laughs> tangled web there. Um, what I'm getting to is that I feel that they were trying to uh, get in the delinquency case that certain things were overlooked or certain biases were uh, permitted in the investigation because of the trooper's uh, close connection to them, which in turn uh, came out when I actually said that she was rehearsed by Trooper Duckworth's mother and prosecutor. And that by bringing that up in the complaint, dealing with you know why I had been charged in over a year after I took my computers, uh, even six months after uh, when the uh, child pornography was addressed, why I wasn't indicted in over a year uh, after I was charged with the crime. The, the evidence that we're not getting, this second search warrant that seems to me to be extremely pertinent in that if the officers are removing evidence from the forensics lab and then trying to get my password to the BlackBerry to get rid of that evidence, it, 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 it seems not uh, <clears throat> completely ethical in my opinion, Your Honor.
Now then, this is my analysis of your recording. If you notice, you don't hear the judge object to anything I had to say during any point in time of that. The reason why is very, very simple. He's already seen the evidence. He already is aware of the issues conflicting with the evidence. The prosecutor is aware. All the time I've been putting out these little complaints going up the chain of command and everything else comes down to this. The entire chain of command of the West Virginia State Police, the governor, and the entire Raleigh County judicial system, as well as the, 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 the Judicial Ethics Commission, are all aware of the things which I'm accusing these people of. Now, what most of you don't know, my lawyer was really happy to point out to me that, oh, you can win this on appeal, you know, because you're not letting you have your evidence. Well, that's fine. But here's the problem. I, I don't want it to go that far. I don't want to give them the excuse, the justification to get out of being caught red-handed violating not only the judicial ethics, the Bar Association's ethics, uh, but the law in and of itself. What you hear is Judge Kirkpatrick covering up. What you hear is a deadline being given to the prosecutor but, and ignoring that fact. What you see, what you hear, well, what you see is pretty much a shirt pocket, but what you hear is this. There is no disposition counter to anything I said in court before Judge Kirkpatrick by the judge. The only issue that was brought up was, of course, the issue from Pat Lamb about it being two separate cases. And this is a simple matter of what we would call doubling down. Blackjack here. You have two cards, kind of good. So instead of, uh... So instead of leaving it set, you simply double down. Going for a second hand. And this is what they're doing, so they're putting both of these in front of uh, Hutchison, which, in fact, is a massive conflict of interest. And as you already heard, Hutchison did the very thing I accused him of. Now, here's the question. What happens if I were to go to court, well, and evidence be brought forward? What about the recordings of the police lying? Oh, no, no, he'll suppress that at trial because I'm attacking my accusers. We're, we're, we're not actually examining the evidence to find out whether or not any of it matters. We're not actually looking at the evidence to determine whether or not any of it is valid. No, that's not happening because we don't have the evidence. They're putting things off, making excuses. And, and you know, it's the judge, Judge Kirkpatrick wanted me to not incriminate myself by not talking about how these people are all associated with each other and having all this information on court record. And in fact, given the fact that my preliminary hearing with uh, Magistrate Massey somehow disappeared, that eight-page statement of mine that was put on record magically gone with the preliminary hearing, which mentions all the players involved. Mary Jennings, who's no longer a magistrate. Steve Massey. Huh? Odd. Oh, oh, Judge Hutchison. Odd. And now, here's the question that needs to be asked. At what point does this fraudulent legal process actually matter? At what point do I get a chance to have a fair day in court when they're trying to suppress and tamper with evidence? E even court records gone missing, covering up for who knows what, what kind of wrongdoing is going on here. Hmm. Seems rather odd, doesn't it? Now, here's what I'm going to say, and I'm going to say this very blatantly and very directly. This is no longer a matter of me defending myself. This is no longer a matter of whether or not I am guilty or innocent. We can look at the evidence and pretty much determine I'm basically innocent. If I wasn't, they wouldn't be so invested in trying to uh, conceal evidence. There wouldn't be missing transcripts. They wouldn't be denying evidence, uh, point of fact, towards all these things. What they're doing is trying to save their asses because they know that the Judicial Ethics Committee has been involved. In fact, most of you aren't aware of this because I mentioned all three lawyers in my, or all, sorry, all three judges in my last Judicial Ethics complaint. I actually made a few little predictions to them. They wanted a more clarified uh statement. So I did bake one. And included in that is a link going back to the entirety of the recording from 
Judge Hutchison, as well as two key pieces of paper showing that I was charged with two counts of delinquency to a minor. One count for Ashley, one count for Leah, and then an appeal on both of those counts where one of those was dismissed, which is pertinent and relevant information which is trying to be suppressed because, of course, Ashley stating at the appeals hearing that she was coerced by her mother, Trooper Duckworth, and uh, the prosecutor's office. Now, what that means is that they are involved right there with tampering with evidence, coercing a witness, a minor witness at that. And when you start going into these other issues of possible, I don't know, um, <clears throat> well, of connections to organized criminal enterprises such as the Avengers and um, the whole issues with the Lilies and the Kirks and the Reds being involved in the police force and several of them being involved in, you know, like I said, uh, groups like the Avengers, which are considered an organized criminal enterprise by the state of West Virginia, as well as being involved in tampering with evidence and falsifying evidence against people, comes down to this. What we're looking at is an, a, a, a very, very uh, slippery slope. To call it quite simply, I see it as this. We're talking about essentially human trafficking. Uh, slavery under color of law. And, well... That's what they're hiding from. They're caught red-handed doing it. Instead of giving me a fair hearing and trial, a fair trial to have a fair hearing to look at this evidence, to, to, to even have an examination of this evidence, an evidence hearing to examine these things, they held off on giving it to us. So that it became an issue of not even questioning whether or not we had the evidence, uh, or, or of how valid the evidence was, but of simply of trying to fight to get what little bit of evidence they had to question whether or not it's legitimate. And this is where we come into. There you have it. Basically, anyone who's arrested is either A, guilty of a crime, or B, being forced into a fraudulent legal process to, well, essentially be beaten into submission under color of law to go out and set other people up. So that these people can come to you and use the threat of going to jail and so-called lawful authority. Well, there you have it. I mean, here here we have Judge Kirkpatrick himself covering up for none other than Mary Jennings, Steve Massey, the Reddens, the Lilies. Hey, I'll let the evidence speak for itself. 